Good, Good morning. morning. Yep, we're coming to you from our Riyadh here in Marrakesh um, on our first night stay, which was lovely. Because of the function of Riyadh though, then basically there's no windows in here. So we ended up naturally waking up at about nine o'clock. Which um, is very unusual for us because we're normally yeah. up by seven at the latest. Yeah, this was definitely a new experience and also a good tip for anybody who's planning on um, coming here and staying in a Riyadh that if you've got something to do early in the morning, set your alarm. The sun will not help you here. With that then, we're having a slightly later start, but thankfully breakfast here is from 8 to 11, so we're going to go grab some breakfast. And the walking tour that we had hoped to have this morning, unfortunately cancelled due to a lack of attendance, but we've booked another one for the afternoon, so we're just going to flip our day around. So we're going to go see some sites, first off, which we don't think are included in the tour, and then we'll convene at about 3.30 in the afternoon, and then do our big tour. Let's go! Yeah! We've just been served breakfast, so it looks like we got a pan of chocolate here and some pancakes uh, with a variety of different preserves and also some laughing cow cheese. And then to top all of that off, we have coffee, milk if we want it, um, and also some freshly squeezed orange juice. All of which this sounds amazing. Turns out that wasn't actually it. So it looks like we got some uh, fried eggs here. And then on top of that, we've also got some bread. One thing about the Moroccan people is they sure do know how to build their houses in order to keep them cool. So what you'll notice is about the exteriors is that they're very plain. They spend their money on the interiors of their house. Another thing you'll notice about the outside is there's very few windows. There are a few, but not many. What they prefer to do is have an inner courtyard, and then all of the interior rooms look onto that courtyard, and they have windows, and so there's really a lot of air that goes up and down the house. But because these walls are so thick, and there's a lack of windows, they're really able to keep the heat out and maintain a cool interior. to then bring it to this particular size. So when you come to visit here, then it's basically split into two parts. The original part that was initially built sort of in the mid 19th century, and then the second part, which was built between 1894 and 1900. It's also what happened during the colonial period, such was the grandeur of this particular palace that the general from the French Legion at the time then ended up making it his own headquarters.
surprises me the most is the astounding tile work. The color is gorgeous. The detail on the ceilings and the archways, I think it's like ceramic or some kind of molding on wood. It's absolutely stunning. We were literally just looking for like just some juice. We asked what was the best thing. He either said orange or like an orange cocktail and we went for the cocktail and that was what we got. Definitely cost a fair amount. It was uh, 20 dirhams each for, for each one of those cups. Which in 
respect like for all that was put in wasn't mm -hmm. actually much but for juice it would have been much cheaper and that's what we asked for but how incredible was that creation I oh my know. gosh she was such an artist exactly and each of those fruits you could tell was freshly picked so nice but yeah now we move on to what we hope is going to be the uh, tom tombo sedian so the sedian tunes with each of these mosaics. It stands to reason that underneath each of these there is actually a person who's very out there. So we've just gone from somewhere where someone was living which is incredibly ornate and, and lavish to somewhere that someone has been buried which is equally architecturally spectacular. And yeah, it's, it's amazing that like certainly when you look at places like the Pyramids of Giza this, the Taj Mahal, and all of which were built in memoriam of someone that they knew that passed on. It just kind of made you realize just the extent that people went to to commemorate their dead in comparison to what we do in the Western world nowadays, which usually is just a grave with a gravestone and that's it. So amazing the place that people go to. Marrakesh even has a bike share scheme. Amazing. in and everything has been thoroughly cleaned not only that but the sofa has been cleared Rachel's shirt has been perfectly folded and then on top of that there's a little heart with towels in the middle of it and look over here they have put our toothbrushes and toothpaste away and like given us new rolled towels with some petals we stopped in Jama Al Fana for which we quickly demolished as well as just a piece of bread that cost two dirham for two pieces of bread. You cannot get better than that. And so we just stopped on a bench to drink that and eat it and we're now on our way to find our walking tour. Marrakesh, it was founded in 1062 by a Berber tribe that came from the desert. It chose this area because this area it was important for trade. 
used to be on one of the main routes for the caravans. And as well because it is near Atlas Mountains. It's as well because of water. For the landscape of the city, as you know, it is divided into two parts. So we have the Medina, it is surrounded by, uh, by a clay wall. It is 20 kilometers. And we have the outside, outside the clay wall. That's a new city or a new town. And it goes back to the French period because Morocco, uh, it was colonized by France from 1912 to 1956. So right now it is one of the biggest uh, cities in Morocco, uh, hosting about uh, 1 million people. They built at Kutubia. The construction of this mosque, it started in 1147 till 1190s. Kutubia it is uh, derived from Kutub, and Kutub it means in English uh, books, because the square over there used to be for tens of booksellers. For the architecture in Morocco, we have uh, the wood uh, that can be sculpted, uh, the stucco and the mosaic. So those are like the three elements for beautifying the architecture here. In Arabic, it means a hotel. The people who used to stay here they used to be more traders and merchants coming from the south of Morocco. And uh, as well, but people as well cross in the city, they can maybe stay here. So it used to be as a hotel, and those are the rooms in which people used to stay. Here. Uh, and uh, we have here uh, 40 rooms. People they can stay here, and they till they sell what they what they buy, bring, and then maybe they can be back home here. It's a dome. It's a dome. Uh, it is one of the historical sites of the Medina, going back to the beginning of the 12th century, and it is part of this mosque. And uh, it used to be for ablution. Ablution is the wash we make before praying, before getting inside the mosque to pray. So we have uh, just under the dome, uh, we used to have a small basin from which people they can take water and make the ablution.
just come back from an awesome walking tour but it was probably about 35 degrees outside and it has kicked my ass so with that then we've come back just to chill a little bit before dinner but the hotel has been incredibly nice and has brought us some tea so we are going to enjoy that i also would like to point out that between the walking we did this morning as well as the walking tour i'm almost at twenty thousand steps so i feel like this break is well deserved we burnt it we burnt it so yeah bit of a break and then some dinner so we've just come out to dinner, found ourselves a really, really cheap place, and so I am enjoying a plate of shawarma with fries and a salad, and Rachel has gone for the quote-unquote sandwich option, which has ground meat in it. And I think all of this is going to come to not very much at all, so um, yeah, great choice all around.